Good afternoon everybody, this is Eric Holloway with the National Weather Service for Alaska Statewide Weather for December 17th, 2020. We have a couple options for you to help you further refine your weather search and look into any watch warnings or advisories we have out. The one 800 number or weather.gov slash Alaska. And lastly, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at the email list at the bottom of the page. For the hazardous weather, we have some advisories out for the mainland up on the northwest coast. We have winter weather advisory out until 6 p.m. on Friday, and we also have a winter weather advisory out for the interior region until 6 a.m. on Friday, and that's again for a lot of blowing and drifting snow and pretty good wind chills in there. Also, we have a winter weather advisory in effect until 4 p.m. on Friday for the northeast Gulf Coast. Also, winter storm warning remains in effect until 4 p.m. on Friday for the northeast corner of the Panhandle. And lastly, a winter weather advisory remains in effect until noon on Friday. And I almost forgot, we have a blizzard warning out for Valdez and from 9 p.m. this evening till noon on Friday for Thompson Pass area. So looking at the satellite information, you can see a couple low pressure systems. Main low pressure system is in the Gulf. That's approaching the Panhandle with some light rain showers at the low elevation showing up and some snow showers across further inland. And that will be moving through the Panhandle over the next day. Also some snow showers, as you can see, through portions of the Southwest and Southern mainland. Also some possibility of blowing and drifting snow. Also some fog along the Arctic coast there. And lastly, another low pressure system near the ADAC area pushing eastward, spreading some mixed precipitation out that way with scattered rain and snow showers across the southern bearing and into the Aleutians. So what does this look like on the surface chart? You can see that 972 millibar low on a cluder front, moderate rain out ahead of that system. Some, again, some light rain at the low elevations is showing up at the, through the panhandle. Otherwise, you move further inland and across the coastal mountains, some uh, light to moderate snow showing up there. And that snow showers continue through much of the southern mainland into the Cook Inlet region down through Bristol Bay. And lastly, low pressure system, as we saw in the satellite, 972 millibar low there, mixed precipitation associated with that system with snow showers across the northern bearing. Also, like I mentioned, blowing and drifting snow across much of the interior and northwest coast with those strong pressure gradients. Lastly, some freezing fog along the Arctic coast. Tonight's weather, that low in the Gulf continues to push into the panhandle. Moderate rain at the low elevations, moderate snow across the high country, coastal mountains, and pushing into the northern Gulf region. Otherwise, scattered snow showers down through the southwest. And that low in the um, Lucian's Bering Sea, 970 millibar low there, mixed precipitation and snow showers across the northern Bering and into the southwest. Again, we're going to be pushing the idea of blowing and drifting snow across the Seward Peninsula and western interior. Strong pressure gradients continue and freezing falling along the Arctic coast. For Friday's weather, that low push through the panhandle, some lingering snow showers across the high country of the panhandle, mixed precipitation at the lower elevations, and snow showers across the southern mainland into Bristol Bay region. And another low pressure system and a clued front uh, near Kodiak Island, 976 millibar low there. That will be pushing into the Gulf on Friday into Saturday, but not to get ahead of ourselves, looking back across the Aleutians into the Bering Sea, mixed precipitation with the uh, areas of low pressure system and snow showers across the northern Bering 
and continued freezing fog along the Arctic coast and blowing and drifting snow across the western interior. Saturday's weather, there's that low that move, makes it into the northern Gulf and heavy rain possible at the low elevations of the central and southern panhandle. Snow showers across the northern portions of the panhandle and some snow showers across the southeast interior and through the um, northern Gulf region. Otherwise, some snow showers in Bristol Bay region southwest, continuing uh, some blowing snow across the northwest coast and freezing fog along the Arctic coast and areas of low pressure out in the Bering, causing mixed precipitation in the Aleutians. So, low temperatures Friday morning, starting with the Gulf Coast region, 39 in Ketchikan, 37 in Sitka, 23 in Juneau, 17 in Haines, 24 in Yakutat, 17 in Valdez, 10 in Anchorage, 10 in Kenai, 20 in Homer, 29 in Kodiak, 11 in King Salmon, minus 23 in McGrath. Taking a look at the North Slope, minus 14 in Kaktovik, minus 12 at Dead Horse, Ukiavik, minus 7, minus 3 in Point Hope, minus 31 in Arctic Village, minus 27 in Fort Yukon, minus 38 in Eagle, look like they're going to get the overnight low, minus 27 in Fairbanks, minus 26 in Tanana, minus 23 in Galena, minus 9 in Nome, 8 in Sabunga, again be leery of the pretty good wind chills through much of the interior. And minus 24 at North Northway. And Big Delta minus 21. And minus 12 at Grayling. For the Southwest region, looking at minus 5 in Antioch, minus 4 in Bethel, 10 in Dillingham, 30s through the Alaska Peninsula in Aleutians, with 31 in Cold Bay, 34 in Dutch Harbor, 35 in Shimia, 32 in St. Paul. Four high temperatures Friday morning, 43 in Ketch um, Ketchikan, 44 in Sitka, 33 in Juneau, 24 in Haines, 33 in Yakutat, 22 in Valdez, 18 in Anchorage, 20 in Kenai, 28 in Homer, 35 in Kodiak, minus 3 in Lime Village, minus 12 in McGrath, 16 in King Salmon. For the North Slope, Friday afternoon, minus 9 in Kaktovik, minus 7 in Dead Horse, Ukiavik, minus 3, Point Hope, 2. Minus 15 in Arctic Village, minus 16 in Antubic Pass, minus 17 in Fort Yukon, minus 27 in Eagle, minus 19 in Fairbanks, minus 13 in Tanana, minus 13 in Galena, 0 in Nome, 12 in Sabunga. And then for the southwest region, Friday afternoon, high temperatures, minus 3 in Antioch, 1 in Bethel, 11 in Dillingham, 35 in Cold Bay. 36 in Dutch Harbor, 36 in Shemia, St. Paul, 34. Low temperature Saturday morning, looking at 43 in Ketchikan, 41 in Sitka, 30 in Juneau, 23 in Haines, 32 in Yakutat, 11 in Anchorage, 10 in Kenai, 20 in Homer, 28 in Kodiak, 8 in King Salmon, minus 24 in McGrath. For the North Slope, Saturday morning, minus 18 in Kaktovik, minus 12 in Ukiavik, minus 2 in Point Hope, minus 24 in Fort Yukon, minus 29 in Eagle, minus 20 in Fairbanks, minus 24 in Galena, and minus 7 in Nome, 9 in Sabunga. For the Southwest region, low temperatures Saturday morning, minus 13 in Antioch, minus 6 in Bethel, 28 in Cold Bay, 32 in Dutch Harbor, 31 in Shimia. 24 in St. Paul. For high temperatures Saturday afternoon, 44 in Ketchikan, 43 in Sitka, 4, 38 in Juneau, 33 in Haines, 36 in Yakutat, minus 3 in Golcana, 24 in Valdez, 17 in Anchorage, 20 in Kenai, 27 in Homer, 25, 35 in Ketchikan, 17 in King Salmon, minus 15 in McGrath. For the North Slope, Kaktovik minus 14, minus 9 in Ukiavik, 1 in Point Hope, minus 19 in Fort Yukon, Arctic Village, minus 20, minus 26 in Anaktuvik Pass, minus 17 in Eagle, minus 13 in Fairbanks, minus 14 in Galena, 3 in Nome, 17 in Sabunga. 
And finally, for the Saturday afternoon, high temperatures, minus 5 in Antioch, Bethel 1, 30s through the Alaska Peninsula, through the Aleutians, with 33 in Cold Bay, 36 in Dutch Harbor, 35 in Shimia, and 30 in St. Paul. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hi everyone, this is meteorologist Joel Curtis with your aviation weather. Starting out with our flying weather Friday morning, uh, IFR along the North Slope coast, uh, into southwest Alaska and all over the Bering Sea, into the Gulf, including Prince William Sound, and then down the coast to the Panhandle. For Friday afternoon, again, more uh, IFR in the Bering Sea and along the North Slope coast. Also for Northern Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound, Northeast Gulf Coast, and into the eastern areas of the Panhandle. By Saturday morning, the IFR again has moved into the southwest coast, all the way into Bristol Bay, also persists along the North Slope Coast, uh, some in the Wrangell Mountains, also the Kenai Peninsula and Prince William Sound, and then on over, uh, almost completely covering the Panhandle. On Saturday afternoon, persistent IFR along the North Slope Coast, southwest Alaska, across Northern Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound, across the Northeast Gulf Coast, and almost all of the Panhandle. For our past conditions on Friday, Anaktuvik, VFR, Attigan, VFR, Lake Clark, and Merrill, VFR, deteriorating to marginal VFR. Rainy, VFR. Windy, VFR. Isabel, VFR. Mentasta, VFR, marginal VFR becoming VFR. Tanita, IFR. Portage, IFR. Chilkoot and White Pass, both IFR all day Friday. Our freezing levels on Friday morning, at the surface again for most of the state, however some warm air aloft with a level of about 2,000 feet has moved over most of the panhandle. For our icing on Friday, extensive areas of isolated moderate below 3,000 feet, but for both uh, mainland portions of Alaska, southwest coast, and then out into the Bering Sea. We do have two areas of considerable moderate between 3,000 feet and 8,000 feet in the Bering Sea and across the Alaska Peninsula, and also for the northeast Gulf Coast, as well as the entire Panhandle, below 10,000 feet as that front approaches. For a jet stream on Friday, easterly 70 knots along the, over the north slope. Otherwise, most of the wind is well south of the state. We do have 90 knot southwest release over the panhandle that decreases rapidly as you go further north, and then further to the south, all the way up to 120 knots. For 9,000 foot winds, again, the north slope getting starting out as 30 to 40 knots out of the east and then ramping up to 45, 60, and by the time you get to the Chuck Key Sea, 65 knots. To the south, over the uh, eastern Aleutians, 40 knots out of the west-northwest. Uh, off of Kodiak, coming off at about 40 knots or so and increasing to 55 over the Gulf. Over the Panhandle, mostly 35, but you will see occasional pockets of 45. And for 3,000 feet, again the north slope, starting out at 45 knots east release and ramping all the way up to 60 as you get to the Chukchi Sea. There's a second band of wind, 50 to 50 knot, 40 knots across the uh, south of the Brooks Range and down into the interior and across Norton Sound. 35 knots out of the southeast near Cape Newenham, 45 knots across the eastern Aleutians and out into the Gulf. And then that circulation in the Gulf, uh, we see 45 knot easterlies along the northeast Gulf Coast, 35 knots of the Panhandle, and then 55 knots out in the Gulf with a good burst of wind from that low. So for our turbulence on Friday, extensive area of considerable moderate and then some isolated severe for about the northern third, northern half of the state or so, and there is low-level wind shear. 
and all of this area is below 6,000 feet. For the Panhandle and Northeast Gulf, considerable moderate and below 6,000 feet. And then out in the Aleutians, it's kind of low level, below 3,000 feet, but with low level wind shear and isolated severe on the Bering side. Well, that's our aviation forecast for today. Thanks for tuning in and fly safe. Hey there, my starry-eyed friends. I am Trace, and this week we're going on a star-hopping adventure to find the dim constellation Pisces, which is playing host to the planet Mars. Pop on outside around 9 and look west. There you should see the great square of Pegasus Asterism, a diamond shape of four bright stars. Find Shiat on the right and split the difference between Alginib and Alpha Rats at the top and left and you're going to run into Mars's bright red glow. Mars is in the middle of the two fish of Pisces and the square of Peggy is like nestled in its crook. The bottom left of the square faces the western fish and the eastern fish is just above the top left edge of the square with a giant celestial string connecting them. Really quick, here's a little homework. Keep an eye on the planet Jupiter in the southwest. It's going to meet up with another planet and it'll be a gas. More on that next week. Keep looking up. The Yukon Flats National Wildlife Refuge is a refuge in Alaska. It's the third largest refuge in the National Wildlife Refuge system. North of Fairbanks, it's a vast ecosystem of wetlands. What drives this refuge are natural forces of fire, ice, and water. The Yukon Flats has got a really interesting history. Back in the late 50s, early 1960s, there was a proposal to dam the Yukon River down by Rampart, which is downstream of the Yukon Flats and it was a hydroelectric proposal. And so in order to assess the merits of that proposal, people got together because they were a little bit concerned about what the impacts might be on the Yukon Flats, the habitat, and all the people living within the Yukon Flats refuge. There's quite a few people living within the refuge. We have seven villages. So in order to figure out how special the Yukon Flats was, the Fish and Wildlife Service banded over 40,000 ducks within the Yukon Flats. And using the band return information, they found out that those ducks were using 45 of the 50 lower 48 states. They were using seven foreign countries, and they were using most of the provinces over in Canada, as well as all the major flyways down in the lower 48. And so that identified that the Yukon Flats was a special breeding area. And that information, along with a lot of other public information that was gathered during that whole process really ensured that the dam never did go in and thus the habitat was preserved. So what that did is it really highlighted the national importance of this area and how important conserving this particular area is for conserving many other natural areas in the lower 48 and even across the continent. Refuge because we have responsibility towards our future generations to leave land protected um, in the state that it is now. The Yukon Flats is a wild place. The ecosystem is intact and functioning and you can't find that very many places in the rest of the U.S. The Yukon Flats Refuge is among the most important places for ducks. So each spring, millions of ducks, and in addition to shorebirds and geese, raptors and loons, they all fly to the refuge to nest and rear their young. And the reason they are attracted to this area is because it has really enriched wetlands. There are lots of nutrients in the wetlands that provide a lot of food for the growing young. We also have a lot of predator, prey species like bears and 
black bears, grizzly bears, wolves. We also have a lot of moose and fur bearers that use the refuge. So overall, there's just a great diversity of both upland, lowland, and migratory bird species that use the refuge. Most people know the flats as a duck nursery, um, and that was one of the main purposes that was designed for, but a lot of recent research over the last decade has really illustrated how important it is to a variety of native endemic fish species for subsistence and recreational and commercial fisheries throughout the entire Yukon River Basin and out to supporting commercial fisheries out to the Bering Sea as well. So it, it, it supports a variety of different whitefish and salmon species, the northern pike, a uh, little bit of everything that people rely on as cultural identities but also for subsistence resources and where people go to, to recreate and enjoy being outside. Well, the type of recreation that you're going to find on Yukon Flats Refuge is very primitive. And what that often does is it gives people a complete break from some of the stresses of today's world. There are no cell phone towers out there. There are no roads. There are no trails. So any type of recreation that people have is entirely natural. The lands and waters within the Yukon Flats National Wildlife Refuge are open to the public to enjoy. And that's a really important tenant upon which the United States is built. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Taking a look at the marine forecast, starting with the ice edge, you can see some openings in the Chukchi Sea, and that's basically because of the strong easterly winds. That's also pulling ice off the coastal areas. You can see down through the west coast there, Norton Sound region, and just north of the Seward Peninsula, some openings there, and that's again because of the strong easterly winds up there. Otherwise, some good ice growth through the Bering Sea and West Coast region, even into Bristol Bay and Cook Inlet. Taking the Marines' forecast for southeast, inside waters winds generally from a variable direction, 20 to 25, with gusts of 35 there in the Stevens Passes area. Outside waters winds generally from the west at 30 to 40 with seas as high as 18 feet. Again, look for gale force winds out there on Friday. Those strong winds continue into Saturday with outside waters generally from the westerly direction, 20 to 35 with seas as high as 19 feet. Again, look for gales in there. For the inside waters, winds generally from the southerly direction, 15 to 25 with seas as high as five feet over the Clarence Strait region. For South Central Gulf region, winds generally from a variable direction, 30, with seas as high as 12 feet. Prince William Sound winds generally from the north at 20, seas as high as 3 feet. For the Cook Inlet region, winds variable 10 to 15, with seas as high as 4 feet there in the Kamishak Bay region. For Saturday's forecast, Gulf region winds generally from a westerly direction, 25 to 30, seas as high as 12 feet, possible gale force winds in there. Otherwise, Prince William Sound winds generally from the northwest at 10 with seas as high as 2 feet. Cook Inlet region winds variable 10 to 25 with seas as high as 6 feet in the Kamishak Bay region. For Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island round, winds around Kodiak Island winds generally from the west at 20 to 30 with seas as high as 14 feet. And south side of the Alaska Peninsula winds generally from the southwest at 35 with seas as high as 15 feet. Again, look for Gale force winds out there. Otherwise, north side of the peninsula winds generally variable 20 to 30 with seas as high as 14 feet. For Saturday's forecast, winds around Kodiak Island winds generally from the west at 25 to 30 seas as high as 13 feet. South side of the peninsula winds generally from the west at 25 seas as high as 11 feet. North side of the peninsula winds continue out of the west 25 with 
sees as high as nine feet. For the Lucian chain, Friday, looking at winds generally from the west at, let's see, 20 to 30 with seas as high as 15 feet just north of Unalaska. And for Saturday, Lucian's looking at winds continuing out of the westerly, generally out of the westerly direction, 20 to 30 with seas as high as 15 feet there near Kiska. For west coast, winds generally from the east at 20 to 30 with seas as high as 9 feet in the Prib area of the Pribloffs. And for Saturday, winds generally from a northerly direction, 15 to 20 with seas as high as 6 feet. And in the Norton Sound region, winds generally from the northeast at 15 with ice cover in there. For the Arctic coast on Friday, winds generally from the northeasterly direction, 20 to 25. In the Chukchi Sea region, winds generally from the east at 30 to 45. And down through the Bering Strait, winds generally from 25 to 30, with seas as high as 9 feet just south of the Bering Strait. For Saturday, Arctic coast region, for the Beaufort Sea region, winds generally from a northeasterly direction, 10 to 20. For the Chukchi Sea Coast, winds generally from a northeasterly direction, 30 to 40, and down through the Bering Street, winds generally from a northeasterly direction, 20 to 30 as well. Seas as high as 5 feet near St. Lawrence Island. For tonight's weather, the main feature will be a 975 millibar low in the Gulf, spreading moderate rain at the low elevations across portions of the Panhandle. Moderate snow further inland across the coastal mountains and northeast panhandle. And that snow showers continues along the northern gulf and down through the Bristol Bay region with some scattered snow showers. Otherwise, low pressure areas out in the Bering Sea. And from the Friday's weather, weakening low pressure. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.